I want to welcome you to our wonderful broadcast tonight. This is a power night. Expect miracles to happen. And here you are from the Embassy, Kingdom Embassy International in Rhode Island. This is Apostle Charles. We're ready to roll. Hallelujah. Just raise your hands. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. 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 How are we doing, guys? Are we good? It's working. Hallelujah. Praise God. We want to welcome you to the Kingdom Embassy International. This is our Wisdom Wednesday Power Night. And God is about to do something uncommon in your life. And we're just going to worship Him tonight in the beauty of His holiness. So are you ready? Are you ready to go? Father, I worship you out of my spirit. Blessing and thanking you in our own way. Your heart I covered, your will and purpose into submission. I surrender this day into the chamber be free holy spirit speak through me gently as i close the door heavenly lover let thy presence cover shekinah on ending is all I long for into the chambers be free Holy Spirit speak through me gently as I close the door heavenly lover let thy presence cover Shekinah on ending is all I long for. Into the chamber be free, Holy Spirit. Speak through me gently as I close the door. Heaven, the lover. Let thy presence cover Shekinah on ending is all I long for. Father in heaven, Father, I worship you out of my spirit, blessing and thanking you in our own way. Your heart I covered, your will and purpose into submission. I surrender this day into the chamber, be free, Holy Spirit. Speak to me gently. As I close the door, heaven, the lover, let thy presence cover. Shekinah on ending is all I long for. Into the chamber be free, Holy Spirit. Speak through me gently as I close the door. Heavenly lover, let thy presence cover. Shekinah on ending is all I long for. Shekinah on ending, Shekinah on ending. Is all I long for. You won't leave here 
like you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here like you came in jesus name i will leave here like i came in jesus name now pressed tormented sick or lame for the holy ghost of acts it's still the same. You won't leave here like you came in Jesus' name. Let's sing it. I won't leave you. I won't leave here like I came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, tormented, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. I won't leave here like I came in Jesus' name. Be free in the name of Jesus. Be healed. In the name of the Lord, act on His words, and your prayers be heard. It is done in the name of the Lord. I want you to know whatever you need, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be free in the name of the Lord. Act on his word. And let your words declare that it is done in the name of the Lord. So act on his word. And your word confess that it is done in the name of the Lord. You act on his word and let your word confess it is done in the name of the Lord. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears so wiped away. He takes the gloom and fills your life with his glory. For all is changed when Jesus comes to stay. One sat alone. Besides the highway begging, his eyes were blind, the light he could not see. He caught his rags and shivered in the shadows. Then Jesus came and be the darkness away. When Jesus comes, Satan's power is broken. When Jesus comes, all tears are wiped away. He takes the gloom 
and fills your life glory for all is changed when Jesus comes to stay and it is Jesus yes it is Jesus it's Jesus in my soul for I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made me Wherever you are, just raise your hands. For the glory of the Lord he is here. For the glory of the Lord is here. For the glory of the Lord from heaven above. For the glory of the Lord is here. Tonight, I want to share a testimony with you just happened a few hours ago. I was on a phone call to a dear sister in Nigeria for the last four weeks because she had in her duodenum in her intestine and she had not been able to sleep properly because the pain was shooting right through her chest all the way to her back and for the last four weeks she had been in bed in pain and I just started talking to her about a subject and I said to her I made a statement to her I said, I do not get sick. She said, how can that be possible? I said, because if I tell you, you probably know this, but you don't understand it. And I said to her, you see, people get sick, but not those that are born of God. And she said, what do you mean? I say to her, okay, what I'm going to do is I am going to take you through the journey of the Word of God. We'll do that tonight. What it means to be born of God. What it means to be really born of God. I'm not talking about religion. And this lady, as I began to go through about seven or eight scriptures, as I was teaching, every pain in her navel, all the way that ran down to her stomach, that has been going four weeks, disappeared. I did not pray for her. All I did was I showed her the truth. And this lady was completely healed. Completely healed. Completely healed. If he did it for that lady, he will do it for you. For the glory of the Lord is here. For the glory of the Lord is He. For the glory of the Lord from heaven above. For the glory of the Lord is He. For the glory of the Lord is here. For the glory of the Lord is here. For the glory of the Lord from heaven above. For the glory of the Lord he is here. Let's sing it again. 
For the glory of the Lord is He. For the glory of the Lord is He. For the glory of the Lord from heaven above. For the glory of the Lord is here. For you are great. For you are great. You the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You the miracle so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you, awesome God, awesome God, how great thou art, for you are God, mighty are your miracles, you standing all of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship you. Awesome God, awesome God, how great thou art. For you are God, mighty by your miracles, but stand in awe of your holy name. Lord, we bow and worship. We give you all the glory. We worship you, our Lord. You are worthy to be praised. We give you We 
worship you alone. You are worthy to be praised. We give you all the glory. We worship you alone. You are worthy to be praised. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I want you to share this with everyone because this is going to be a transformation evening for you. Wherever you're watching, I want you to take a notepad or your iPad or whatever pad you have. Get it ready. We're going to take some good notes. We're going to do the Bible study. I want to talk to you about what it means to be born of God. There is a new breed on the scene. And I'm going to be looking at some scriptures to help you understand how to operate in that. Thank you, guys. Amen. Are you ready? I want you to share this with as many people as possible. Make sure we have it on all of our platforms. That way people can be blessed by it tonight. Amen. I want to make sure that everybody is on board with that. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody say, it's a great day. Say, it's a great day. To be alive. So the me I see is the me I will be. Say, is the me that I'll be. Said, all that I see is Christ in me. Christ alive in me in the now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So what I'm talking about tonight is what it means to be born of God. I'll be reading some scriptures to help you get a better understanding of this. First John chapter 3 verse 9 says, Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him. And he cannot commit sin because he is born of God. Verse 10, in this the children of God are made manifest, and the children of the devil Whosoever do, do it, not righteousness, not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. Now, I'll be reading that. I'll be going to use scriptures to help you get a better understanding of what we're talking about tonight. Hallelujah. Now, if you read your Bible, if you go to 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, it says this. Ye are of God. Now, with this epidemic that has been going on around the world you find out today a lot of people they, that when you tell them listen you don't get sick the first thing that goes through your mind is what makes you different what makes you immune to sicknesses and diseases you see the 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 understanding you have the revelation you have is what gives you an advantage whatever revelation you have is what gives you an advantage so a lot of times when I hear people, you know, they say, but I'm a Christian. I believe in miracles. But, you know, we have to be reasonable. Now, I have to tell you, when we, what I'm about to tell you tonight might shake you to the core. To understand that sickness can only happen if you are human. Sickness can only happen to you if you're human. And I was explaining to the sister in back in Nigeria over the phone and I say to her the reason is I am born of God I am born of God and I say to her first John 4 verse 4 tells me it says this very clearly it says you're of God little children and you've overcome them because great is he that's in you than he that is in the world Great is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Now, I want you to pay attention to this. Verse 5 says, they are of the world. Pay attention to this now. It says that they are of the world. Now, John is trying to make a distinction. And we're going to find that also that Paul made a distinction. 
and Peter made a distinction. There are two categories of people. There are people that are biologically driven. And then there are people that are driven by the spirit. So here they are explaining two groups of people, two kinds of people. There are the biological kind of people and then there is the new creature. So you have to understand for a sickness to happen, you must be under a certain class of being for that to happen. So I said to the lady, I said, I've never seen a car with cancer. Because it's a different kind of thing. I've never seen a person, I've never seen a, a certain species having certain kind of condition. Because there are certain sicknesses that can occur in certain species that cannot transfer. Now, it becomes pandemic when uh, people now begin to have a transfer between different species. That's when people begin to really panic going from one kind of species to the next kind of species. But now you have to understand this. Uh, am I correct? Basically, things get really difficult when you have a species transfer of uh, some virus. It goes from maybe animals to humans to... Uh, that's when people begin to panic because that means the, the, the animals can transmit it. And if it goes between human and human, that means it's a pandemic. That means it comes from the animals, then goes to the humans, and then goes to another human. That means it is going to spread very quickly. So if it can go between species, there must be a relationship in terms of something similar that the virus can actually stay in. Because the virus cannot just stay in a place that is not conducive. So that's why a virus cannot land on a hot stove and survive. That's why we wash it with certain kind of uh, fluids or things like that dies off, like what we're talking about COVID-19. Why? For the virus to actually affect another person or another species, there must be a, an environment within that species that can accommodate. Are you hearing me? So I told you tonight, I'm going to get a little deeper to, to understand the difference between what it means to be born of God. Why when we say under a simple statement that we don't get sick and people will criticize you without understanding what you understand because they just think we're just making statements no we're not just making statements we know behind the statement that we don't get sick is because we have revelation the difference between you and the next person is not just that you're standing and you have a human body is what you know that makes the difference now for a for a virus to actually become prosperous in a, a, an organism there must be an environment for it to flourish that's why when the virus comes into a person i can speak now i'm not a medical doctor but i'm a, I'm a scientist i understand science now what i'm speaking to you tonight is what the holy ghost is showing me you can verify with science you find i'm correct anything there is nothing that can actually survive in an environment that it's not conducive for it it will die you bring a fish out of water it's going to die you put certain animals in the water, they will suffocate because that is not your natural environment. So the same thing with a virus, for a virus to come into a human person, that virus must find something that it can actually thrive in. So when it gets into the human, there must be a, a, an environment within the human that would accommodate it. And then it begins to increase and multiply and spread out all over the body. Now taking over the person's body because every, can I talk to you tonight? Every kingdom wants territory. That virus is an evil life form coming into your body to try to take over your body. And before you know it, the person dies. A spiritual. So biologically, when that condition comes in, the person develops what it calls symptoms. 
from the symptoms, they begin to develop all the, all the symptoms and it begins to affect all the organs. Why? Because it begins to adapt to the environment and begin to spread more and more and more. Before you realize it, the person cannot survive and the sickness begins to spread. The Bible tells us in Romans, it tells us, let's look at Romans 5 verse 21. The idea is how does sickness spread? How does, how does the enemy spread? Sickness is simply death trying to reign as a king over your body. I'm talking about understanding when we say we are born of God and we don't get sick. And people will criticize you. Well, who do you think you are? And I kind of see some people when you make a statement, they, they don't understand where you're coming from. They don't understand where you're coming from. So when, when, you, when you get sick, they just say, because first of all, they don't understand you. So they misunderstand you and misrepresent you. So what happens is, I'm talking about getting a better understanding of how sickness happens. That way, if you know how sickness has happened, you understand the species of being that you are, it changes the equation. It changes the equation. I hope you understand what I'm talking about today. Romans chapter 5 verse 21. Can we put it up there? The last verse of Romans chapter 5. Because I want to show you something. Everything is spiritual. Everything is spiritual. So when, you, when you're dealing with what they call a virus, bacteria, whatever it is. Why would a virus come to a human body? It's coming to look territory. Every king. The king of darkness expand his territory the same way God's king is within you and his kingdom within you that's what the Bible says in Luke 17 for the kingdom is within you the kingdom is within you Satan comes trying to expand territory within a human and before you know it his kingdom of darkness is a kingdom of death so he wants to expand his territory every kingdom wants to expand its territory the Bible says that our sin has reigned Unto death. How did sickness start? Sin entered and death came by sin. Now, pay attention to this. We're talking about sin. Then you're going to hear the other words. Let's go back to the beginning of that scripture. As sin reigned unto death, sin reigned unto death, it brings death. Even so, my grace. Sin wants to reign. Grace wants to reign. Grace reign. How does it reign? Through righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the moment you believe it. Abraham believed God and that was counted as righteousness. See, when a person believes God, you can tell by how they talk, walk, and act. You, a person that knows God is speaking, they talk big, they, they dream big, they talk like they've been with God. They don't talk like they've been beaten up by the devil. You can tell a person really is operating by faith in God's word. There is a different sound. It's not just making statements. There is just a quiet confidence. When they speak, you know they know something that others don't know. They know the word. They have an assurance of the word. So a lot of times people don't understand that. We want to make sure that the video clip is going very well. Hallelujah. A lot of times people don't understand. So a virus, when it comes into a human body, it looks for a, a place to attach itself. And then it begins to stay. Now, what you do normally if you have in the lab, they want to do what they call a culture. They want to keep the, see how it, it reacts and it grows. They, they grow it out and see how, and they begin to experiment on it. The same thing it wants to do in the Bible says that a sin has reigned unto death. Sin brought death. What is the beginning of death? Sickness. Sickness would lead you to death. You see, sin gets pregnant and the effect of sin, you begin to see, sickness begins to reign in your body. And that's what happened in Genesis. All of a sudden, people are now experiencing things they're not supposed to experience. That was just death entered into the picture. Romans 5 verse 12. Because of one man, sin entered. One man's disobedience. Sin entered into the world and death came by sin. So, 
I'm going to bring science to it. We're going to be talking about what it means to be born. Born by biology and born by God, the spirit. What it means to be born of God. The difference in the people and the difference in their reaction. No wonder the Bible says these are the signs of the believers. They will touch deadly thing. It will not hurt them. That means there is an immunity in this new species of being. It says in Mark 11, um, so Mark chapter 16, it says, these are the signs that follow them that believe. That means Abraham believed, and that was righteousness. So when Abraham believed, automatically there was something that turned the power or the grace of God. Pay attention. See, righteousness turns the grace, the power of God. So if you want to reign in Grace, you need righteousness. And righteousness is simply believing because the Bible tells us Abraham believed God and that believing was counted as righteousness. So a believing, a right person is a believing person. No wonder the Bible says anything not done in faith is sin. So sin is not believing. So when I believe, I cannot believe sickness cannot touch me because there's something I know that does not give it environment for it to attach itself to me. So the sickness now wants to come on my body, but it meets a different being that has no, no place in that being for it to have a house. So the virus comes, falls on me, and there's no reaction. Why? Just to say, Cancer can you can take cancer out of a human, throw it on the car, it will not affect the car because it's a totally different kind of thing. A new creation is the same way, and that's what the Bible is talking about. Hallelujah! You have to understand when we talk about I don't get sick, people say, What do you mean you don't get sick? and they get almost upset with you because you are not operating by their rules. We operate by different rules. The reason we operate by different rules is because we know different things. Our biggest problem today is you get almost cajoled by the, by the society to act in a certain way. It's called uh, being conformed to the world's way of thinking. Being conformed to the So when you understand the science of it, for, for sickness to come on me and stay, it must come on a human being. But I'm not a human being. I was born as a human being and then I died in Christ and I was raised after godliness. I was raised into a godlike being. And somebody, I think the other day, got mad and says, Oh, Charles calls himself God. He says he is God. Okay, I'm going to read the scriptures for that person that always, that is all mad that I, I say I'm God. I never said I was God. I said I'm of the God type. I'm going to give you scriptures if you really believe your Bible, trust the Bible. You don't have to trust my word. Believe the word. The word is the foundation. It is the constitution of the kingdom. You get the word of God on it and you, you can take that word anywhere. I've heard some people argue without facts. They tell them, but that's not how I feel. Well, if I'm not feeling, I was slapping a lot of people too. I was slapped some people for stupidity. But you can't do that. Hey, you're a preacher. You know, you have to be nice. But some people you just want to say, I want to smack the stupid out of you. But I can't do that, you know. You see, you've got to start thinking. Let me tell you, the way you believe is the way you're living. If you believe in fear, you live in fear. You begin to believe. Tell how many times sometimes sickness will try to land on you, but how you respond to it determines whether it stays or not. I'm telling you, you've got to know how it's called decision making. The moment it comes, you've got to be in a place where you tell a thing back off. It's not a day when people say, I'm going to pray about this. No, you pray to know. People spend more time not knowing. That's why the enemy has a field that somebody says, but we have to pray to God. I didn't say you shouldn't pray. I'm simply saying the purpose of prayer is to make your request known to God. When God knows it, he gives you an answer. The purpose of an answer is so that you 
praying and giving out the answer. The idea wasn't to pray, pray today for 10 hours. God, God is not impressed by a lawyer, Jesus said. Those are not my words. Jesus said, some of you think by your long prayer, you I didn't say that. The king said, long prayer, your wild big prayers. That's not impress God. So God is not impressed by how long you pray. He's impressed by revelation. When you have the spirit of revelation, it changes everything. So I see a lot of times people get mad at you because you know something different from them. And they're trying to make you conform to a, a different way of thinking. Now, I'm saying this to you tonight because sickness, what is COVID, the COVID virus, what is HIV. I, I was going back again looking at some of the videos when we went to the HIV hospital. Everybody gets healed. Same thing, people are being healed by um, COVID-19. People, the lady that was healed today, the lady that was healed yesterday, remember what I said, a miracle a day will keep religion away. A miracle a day will keep religion away. If you're operating in the miraculous, I doubt you will be religious. You'll be full of life. So, as I was saying, a lot of times people don't understand to tell you I mean, no, I, 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 I listen to people, everyone is preaching, is, you know, people are, are trying their very best. But the thing is, what I'm telling you, you've got to understand that knowing the word of God does not take you away from science or science takes you away from the word of God. Science only confirms that God is truth. Science, real science confirms the word of God. As simple as it is. God's word does not need science to verify it or to prove it's real, but you can actually prove the word of God with actual physical evidence. It's as simple as it is. That means the way a virus can come into a human body, it will come and look for a place. That's what Jesus says. When an evil spirit comes, it comes looking for a place. So some of you thought when I was saying that, it, you know, the, the, the virus would, would look for a, for a place. Jesus is talking about when the evil spirit is cast out of a person. That means he just healed a man and is teaching a lesson. So he must have been talking about the sickness of the man that was just healed. So he said, when an evil spirit is cast out of a man, it comes looking for a place. COVID-19 is like that. It comes looking for a place. So it comes out of somebody. It comes looking for a place. But if you don't give it a place, it cannot stay. So I hear people talk and they said, we want to pray for healing. No, 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 no. You don't need to pray for healing. Don't get sick in the first place. Give no place to the devil. Did you read that in your Bible? Give no place. Why? Because he's looking for whom he may devour. He's looking for a place where he can come in and devour. Because he comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. So you know his nature. He doesn't come to bless you. So when you know his nature, you kick him out. Don't give him any room to even come close. So you don't give him room for you to come and get healed. Don't get healed. Don't get sick in the first place. They say prevention is better than a cure. I don't want people to pray for my healing. No, I don't want sickness to even come close. Why? It comes close. It cannot find a place in me because I am born of God. When I begin to think like that, my body begins to respond to what I'm believing. Well, how do I know that? Now, the Bible tells us we're reading Romans, uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 21. Let's read that scripture again because I want to put it up so that you have a better understanding of what I'm talking about. Many people get sick and they think, well, you really have strong faith. You really, no, I just know stuff. That's it. I know how it works. It's like if you know how to make eggs, you make it anytime you want. That's not a spiritual experience. It's just, you just know. You are living. I don't have spiritual experience. I'm born of the spirit. I get it all the time. That's my, that's my default spirit. My default is not, my, my default is not normal. My default is living in the spirit realm because I'm born of the spirit. I am not, I am not uh, living a physical life. I'm a spirit being now manifesting who I really am on the physical world. Hallelujah. So I'm telling you, I said, tonight I want to get a little deeper to understanding. That way, we, you never have to be afraid of sicknesses and diseases. So, so if people don't know that, when I said, 
be gone and the sicknesses are gone. People look at me like, my God, he must be powerful. No, I understand the rules of the spirit. I know that demons, they know who has a higher authority than them. Who can cast them out? He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. See, they know. The devil knows who has power over him. It, those that have that knowledge, those that know their God shall be strong and do mighty exploits. You've got to know. It's about the knowing. The knowing is what releases the power. The Bible says, it says, so my grace reigns through righteousness. Grace, the power of God that puts you over every situation. You re grace will reign through believing. And when you have righteousness, hear what it says. Go to the rest of the scripture. Unto grace reigns as a king through believing unto eternal life. A life that is eternal. In other words, that life has no end. Eternal. The life in you is so potent that anything that is dead comes, dies. And you keep living because it's eternal. If I come and say, I'm giving you I'm giving you this, I'm giving you this product and I say it's eternal and it breaks after two days. That's false advertisement. So if the Bible is saying we have a potent life on the inside of us that is eternal, that means anything that is not eternal that comes, they cannot knock out what we carry. That's what I'm trying to get to you. He says, because great is he that's in you. Than he that's in the world. So the thing that's coming on the outside cannot knock out what's on the inside of you. The day you believe that, I'm telling you, you were smiling and people wondering what's going on with you. That's the day people will be understanding, my God, so you mean you don't get sick? No, I don't need prayer for healing. Somebody once said to me, Oh, do you ever get sick? I said, No. Said, then they said, Supposing I said, Don't even try because I'm not human. If I was if I was human, then I'll get sick. And I said, But we're all human. I said, speak for yourself. The Bible says, why are you walking like may men? Why are you walking like may men? You're walking like you don't know who you are. So now I'm getting back. I'm laying this foundation because tonight we are going to remove the mystery. You're going, going to remove that mystery of sickness and disease so that from now on, when you walk, I don't care the sickness that's around. When you come into their contact in that place, you are the disinfectant of the sickness. You are the antidote of that sickness. When you come to a place, all of a sudden, they're looking for somebody that's built some immunity, and then they can use that. You are the immunity. They're wondering, how come you don't get sick? Because you are born of a different species. So when you're born, you're born into a biological family. And so the biological family, everything that happens in that biological family is passed through the genes. That's why they will ask you, if somebody is sick, they say, so what's your family history? Why? Because family history is important in your health that means something is passed down from generation to generation it's something locked up in you that can become an indicator of what might happen are you hearing me and then the other thing to talk about is what are the environmental factors that's what the doctor will say. So where do you live? So how come you had this condition? You find a man that never smoked, never drank, never did anything, all of a sudden having lung cancer. And you wonder, what? You have a man. Men even have breast cancer. And you're wondering, men have breast cancer? Yes, they do. They never smoked, never drank, but they have... You're wondering, but do you have a history of it in your family? Because it is locked up in the DNA. Are you hearing me tonight? So if it's locked up in the DNA, biologically, what is your spiritual DNA? In your spiritual DNA is the disinfectant. It is the solution to anything biologically that can happen to you. You are born of a different breed. That's what it means to be born of God. If you're born of God, so most people don't, don't understand the thing, where well, I'm born of God, that means my sins are forgiven me. That's most people's understanding of being born again. My sins are forgiving me, I'm going to heaven. What a waste. If that was the only reason Jesus ever came to forgive your sins so they can go to heaven, I can just pray for you to die today and get it over with. You can go to heaven. 
But if that's not the idea, the reason why you're here is to occupy until he comes. If you're going to be the occupying force, you've got to have power to push back the enemy from encroaching into that space again. Occupying forces, they keep every guerrilla activity out of their new territory. So if you are, the kingdom is within you, something on the inside of you should be forceful. Greater is he that's in you than anything out in the world. Like I said, sickness can only come into an environment that it's conducive for it. What is that environment? The environment for sickness is fear. The environment for sickness is when you are doubting what God has said about you. So that creates an, an environment for all kinds of things to happen. The Bible says, Satan has nothing on me. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You've got to understand that we are operating by different rules. So when we're talking to people, they think we're crazy. When we say, we don't get sick. Somebody said, you mean you guys don't get sick? No, I said, no, I don't have time to be sick because I am of a different type. I'm of the God type. So when you're born biologically, you have your biological DNA and things. And then when the Bible says, let's look at, um, let's move that scripture again to 1 John chapter 4 verse 4. It says, it tells you, my little children, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. We're going to move that because I want to say this. You are of God or you are of the God type. So he's saying little children because little children have an identity crisis. They forget who they are. So he's talking, said, my little children, you are of God and you've already overcome them because children always, you know, have you seen a kid when they're growing up, they see a dog, they start acting like a dog because they think they're dogs. They didn't say adults, they say children. So children are trying to get their identity based on their environment, not based on where they're coming from. So if I wrote this while the Holy Spirit was speaking to me. It says, your origin really determines your makeup, not the environment. That means if you're an eagle egg and they put that egg under a chicken, the chicken is not your origin. The environment is the chicken. Your environment is the chicken, but your origin is an eagle. You've got to understand the difference between who you are, your true identity. So I find a lot of times people don't understand this. So they take on the, so that's what, and here is John saying, you are of God, little children, because children are still learning who they are. So he's talking to the children. He talked to the young men and talked to the fathers. The fathers said, you have known the truth. Now he says to the children, okay, I know you're a little confused. He says, you are of God. God. You're not of the devil. You're not of the lower, lower class. You are of the God class. You are on the winning team and you have overcome. You've overcome them. Stop fighting a battle that's already won. You see, children are always struggling. Oh, I want to do this. But adults sit down because they know they won already. That's the difference between when you listen to people preaching and they're always fighting with the devil. They are still babies. Those that are adults in the spirit, they know that the battle already ended. Satan knows them too. He leaves those ones alone. Satan does not attack everybody. He looks for whom he may devour. You have to understand. A lot of times I hear people tell me, but man of God, we've got to pray for the devil. I said, listen, I don't waste my time praying for the devil to do anything. I, because for me to pray for the devil to get out is to engage heaven. But Jesus already came and paralyzed the devil. My job is the occupying force. Greater, greater is he that's in you. So I don't need to call my father. He lives in me. I can tell the devil, now, get out. I don't need to pray for that. When I need to pray, I'm connecting with my father for fellowship. That means I tell daddy, I just love you. I just want to, I just want to hang out with you. Thank you, my father. This is how Jesus prayed. Go to John 17. He says, Father, I thank you. Oh, that's, that's the real Lord's prayer. The other thing about in Matthew, it, in the beginning of Matthew, talking about how, how he said, our father works in heaven. He was giving a little pattern of prayer. 
But the actual prayer of Jesus recorded was John 17. It tells you how he related to the Father in prayer. He was not begging. He was not fighting the devil. He said, Father, the people you've given me, hallelujah, the glory you've given me, I've given them. It was fellowship. It wasn't fighting and shouting, oh God, the devil is powerful. No. Satan is not powerful. Sickness is not powerful. We put sickness. Do you ever see Jesus panic about a dead person or sickness? I'm of his type. Hallelujah. I am coming from that place. Hallelujah. So when you talk like this, people don't understand that we know things about sickness, how it comes. So if we give the devil no place, sickness has no place in me. That's why I have been in places where I have taught people with contagious sicknesses. I didn't get sick. People say, but isn't that dangerous? It's only dangerous. Remember what I talked about on Sunday. You can be living dangerously. Am I correct? See, it is a danger if you don't know the rules. Things are dangerous if, why would somebody jump off the plane? Because they know it's safe. They know. So when I say I don't get sick, when I go to that place and I say, come out. When I come to a place where people are sick, I know something. So it's no longer dangerous for me because of my knowledge, revelation. I know how to go the same way. Why would doctors go in the middle of COVID to help the people? Because they have knowledge of how to protect themselves. Same thing with me. I have knowledge of how to protect myself and the sickness cannot come close to me. It's the same thing. The seven sons of Sceva, they tried to cast out devils, but they didn't, they, didn't, they didn't know that you needed a relationship to do that kind of business. The seven sons of Sceva, what did they do? They said, in the name of Jesus who Paul preached. They didn't have knowledge. They didn't have knowledge of the Jesus that Paul preached. Paul came from Jesus. They didn't come from Jesus. They borrowed his name. A lot of Christians are borrowing the name of Jesus. <laughs> a lot of Christians are borrowing the name of Jesus. Oh, in Jesus' name. Saying in Jesus' name does not mean the devil will get out. You see, I don't have to say, okay, now I know some of the people are watching now. Listen to me. I don't have to say in Jesus' name. When I say get out, he knows it's already in that name. Whatever I do in word or in deed is already in that name. Why? Because I'm baptized into that name. So when I say come, it's already in the name of Jesus. Whatever you do in water and deed, it's already in the name. So I don't need to pray, oh Lord, in your name. No, 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 no. I am already in the name. So I'm baptized into the name. The Bible says, into whose name were you baptized? You're baptized into the name. That means when you're immersed into that name, you become one with the one that has the name. And when you use the name, the one that has the name is in you to execute. That's what I'm talking about. So I say to you tonight, those of you watching, you can't change this because I'm going to teach you when you get to a place, you will never have to struggle. Uh, you know, these days I don't talk a lot. I don't do a lot of preaching. I live it because I want to hear what people are saying. But I realize everybody's kind of lightweight. Everybody's talking about we got to we got to command of uh, coronavirus to go away. No, I don't even worry. Let me tell you something. If the coronavirus is right here, he will be the one suffering. Not me. I gotta, I gotta make you understand. That means if I'm immune to it, it's like somebody said, Oh, the devil is coming to your house. I said, Oh boy, I can't wait. Do you remember those in Elmira? We will take all these drug addicts to our house. And they said, Aren't you bringing demons to your house? I said, The devil is very stupid to come and get tormented by me. He doesn't torment me, I do the tormenting. That's what they said about Jesus. Have you come to torment us before our times? I'm in that class. That's those born of God. Hallelujah. Satan doesn't torment me. I torment the devil. Every time I show a poor devil, he's up again. That's why they all get mad. Oh, wait, he thinks he's all spiritual. I don't think I'm all spiritual. I know I'm born of the spirit. So I, there's no argument about that. So you think you're better than us? I never said that. You said that. I didn't say I was better than you. I'm saying you're pretty good too. Hallelujah. So wake up to it. Glory. <laughs> What am I saying to you? Sickness. So we don't understand this. You can't miss this tonight. Because once you understand what is born of God. The Bible says whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever. Whatsoever. Everybody say whatsoever. 
That's the key. He said, whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. You are not a who, you are a what. If you're a what, that means, that's First John chapter 5, verse 4. It says, whatsoever is born of God. Let's put that up on the screen. Whatsoever is born of God overcomes the world. Whatsoever. Let me tell you something. Sickness cannot touch me. I'm talking about what it means to be born of God. I'm not talking about, oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, I believe I'm going to go. No, no, no. Come on. That's all religion. If you are born of God, you overcome the world. You're not going to overcome. You overcome the world. The victory that overcomes the world is one word. Faith. Your faith. That's what triggers it. And when you have faith in God's word, it triggers grace to reign. Hallelujah. It triggers the power to reign unto eternal life according to Romans chapter 5 verse 21. That's what I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about what it means to be born of God. I've heard a lot of things. Preachers say, oh, we have to do this. I saw a picture of a lot of preachers. No. I said to, I was saying to Ning, I said to her, Ning sent me a picture of a lot of preachers with, uh, with things covering their nose. He said, Dad, would Jesus ever put a mask over, over his face? I said, no, he would just heal everybody. End of story. I'm of the Jesus type. He said, so what, would you wear a mask? I said, no, 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 I will wear a mask if I'm going into their world. When I get there, I heal them all, then we take it off. <laughs> I'll go in there, wear a mask, heal them all, we are free. I said, now take off your mask, it's not necessary anymore. As simple as it is. You know, I know people are always getting all upset. Well, you, you got to follow up. I don't operate by fear because I give no room to fear. You see, it's only dangerous if you lack knowledge, if you lack phrenesis, if you lack wisdom, if you lack understanding. But when you have knowledge, my dear friends, you will reign in life as a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to understand that whatsoever is born of God, whatso not who, whatsoever, you are of the God type. So I'm talking about what it means to be born of God. In this time with all the world getting all panicky, there is a new breed of people, a new species of being that the world has never seen. Now is the, manifest the time for the manifestations of the sons of God. This is a time those that are born of God are rising up Perfect scenario. Get ready. The world will be amazed. You come to places. Instead of people getting sick, they're getting well. Why? Because there's a life force being released. Because the greater one is inside of you. That's what I'm talking about. You see, I hear, I hear a lot of things. Well, we got to pray for God to do this. I, no, let me tell you something. I don't pray for God to do anything. He kept, he kept me in charge. He says, in my name, go do it. So he said, but we've got to pray to God. No, I fellowship with him. Father, thank you for what you've given me. Thank you for trusting me with the good news. That's a Jesus talk. I'm of that class. That's what it means to be born of God. Sound like Jesus. Don't sound like a beggar down the street. Sound like Jesus. Sound like royalty. And demons will clear out. So I've heard a lot of things people talk about. You know, they, people are all scared about everything. Listen, let me tell you. I'm... Somebody said to me, but you've, you're supposing it happened. I said, no. It's like asking a skydiver, are you afraid of jumping? A skydiver said, no. I look forward to jumping off the plane. It's accelerating. Why? Because I know how to be safe. I'm not panicking. The same thing, I know when death is around, when I show up, the Bible says, I become the fragrance of life. Because I'm not human, for sickness to come on me, I must be susceptible to sickness. I must say, I say to you, for those of you that have just joined us, I said, every virus, every sickness needs an environment to grow. It has to be received first and then stays in that environment and begins to, you know, they have a culture, begins to grow out. It begins to see whether the environment is conducive. If not, it dies. So if the enemy comes, if the virus comes on you and thinks you're human, they say the virus can only come to an environment and stay there if the environment is conducive. My environment, my body is not conducive for sickness. It's not conducive. It's so full of fire. So if I'm full of the fire of the Holy Ghost, sickness cannot come close. Somebody said, but there are other preachers. Do I look like I'm a preacher to you? 
I'm the son of the king. You see, there are other preachers. I'm not all the preachers. I know what I'm talking about. The same way you can say there are other people trying to, trying to jump off the plane. I'm not them. I'm somebody that knows how to control my jump. I know how safe it is when I'm jumping off the plane. I have revelation. The same way when we are talking about dealing with demons, dealing with sickness. Give no place to the enemy. Don't give him an environment that's conducive. And that environment is an environment of fear. Never you do that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And for those of you, if you want to hear more of this teaching, you got to come to Power School in July. That's where the action is. Hallelujah. At the embassy in Rhode Island, we just give it like it is. Let me tell you something. The revelation that God gives us. Paul said, according to my revelation, see, I'm not reading some books. I'm trying to figure it out and say, well, so and so said so. If it's not on the word of God, I don't care who said it. The word of God is the foundation and the finality of our revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You see, you've got to understand things from a different perspective. Stop worrying about what people think of you. You're operating by different rules. I'm talking about those that are born of God. Listen, what scripture did I say you should put up? I said, 1 John chapter 4, go to verse 5. That was where I started off when we started out. 1 John 4, verse 4 says, You are of God, little children, and you have overcome them. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Verse 5 says, let's go to verse 5. I want to show you something amazing in verse 5. It says, They are of the world therefore speak them they of the world so they are of the world they are of the biological people that's why they talk about virus and biological stuff in other words children 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 listen to me you are not like them stop talking their language and start acting like them because you are immune from their issues that's what he's talking about here hallelujah he says you've got to understand that he says they are so if they are there there they must be us we are not them they are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world hears them the world will tell you about virus tell you about this no we are not of the world we are not of this world we are he didn't say we're not in this world. He said we're not off. That means your origin. Your origin. Everybody say origin. You see, your origin determines your makeup. That means you can be an eagle and the environment is a chicken environment. One day you realize you're not a chicken. Once that egg is hatched, you will look at your stripes. You look up and see the eagles. You decide, I'm not one of those chickens. I won't get eaten by the eagle. I'll spread my wings and fly out of this little place. I'm talking to some of you. You've been bound by religion. You've been bound by people creating fears around you. It's time to tell them, I'm not one of those chickens that's always afraid of eagles. I'm one of the eagles that the chickens ought to be afraid of. Hallelujah. You've got to understand how we're talking in this place. You've got to sound like a king. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says in verse 5. Let's keep reading at verse 5. Because I want to bring something. And I think I'm going to teach this all through the week. I'm going to teach this tomorrow. And I will continue teaching it. Because I don't want you to miss what it means to be born of God. It says they are of this world. Therefore speak they of the world. And the world hears them. Let's keep reading that. Hear what it says. We are of God. He that knows God. If you know God, you will hear us because we have a God kind of language. The language God talks, he's not afraid of sickness. The language God talks, heals the sick. The language God talks, prospers people. So when I hear people talk, I said, you must not be of God because you don't sound like God. And they say, well, we have, I said, no, 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 no. I am of God. So we know God and those that know God, they hear us. Those that don't know God, they don't have a revelation and knowing an idol. Or I'll put it maybe revelation, epignosis. You have to have a, a revelation of God. You will understand what I'm talking about. You know that if you're born of God, you are of the God type. So if you are born of God and you're of the God type, you will hear what I'm saying. So this is not for everybody. Hallelujah.
So not everybody. You can be listening to me or you can be listening to the world. So the way the world speaks, do you sound more like everybody else or do you sound like a different creature? What does that mean? The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 16. We no longer regard people after the flesh. Because if any man be in Christ, that man is a new creature. That's the point I'm trying to make. If you're born of God, you are a new creature. And it says here is, is John speaking. And the other one is Paul writing to the Corinthian church. And telling them, you are a new species of being. That's why the Bible says... Talking about the new crea creation, it says in, uh, in um, Ephesians chapter 2 verse 10. It says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Your origin is Christ, not sickness. So what's the difference? Your difference is you are different from Adam and his biological heritage. So when you come to Christ, I used to hear people tell me, well, you know, we need to do deliverance because, you know, a generational. I said, you don't understand. When I got born again, it wasn't my old nature that was killed. No, it was a brand new being, a new creature that never existed that came out of God. And all that creature needed was this body. So this body is not the old creature. The one who lives in this house is a new occupant. So the new occupant does not get sick. The old nature, the old occupant used to be sick all the time. When this new one come, this one has the doctor living with him. Residency. Hallelujah. He is my resident doctor. That means he, he, I don't have to go and see my doctor. He says, I am your doctor. And I am. I say, he said. He says, I will dwell in you. Hallelujah. I will walk in you. My doctor, if I take a step, my doctor. How can I be sick when I have 24-7 medical, medical doctor inside of me? Because I'm a new creature. That new creature, his doctor is always there. So, for sickness to attack the new creature, it's absurd. The only time the sickness can attack the new creature is if the new creature takes on the nature of the old. That is susceptible, is susceptible to receiving the sickness. That's why you renew your mind. You change your thinking and it becomes fire on the inside. Hallelujah. Well, that's what I'm talking about tonight. Understanding that no sickness can touch your body. And people can say all kinds of things they want to say about you. But one thing they can never say is that you're not consistent in what you're doing. You cannot get sick. I've never, I don't get sick. Pastor doesn't get sick. Our team here, you guys, we've been together doing things. We, we are moving mountains in five weeks, right? We're just cutting loose. And things are happening. And people are wondering, well, everyone is not doing anything. I said, we have done more in five weeks than we've done in five years. That's what I'm talking about. We're on fast forward. You got to know how we roll in this place. Hallelujah. What am I saying to you? I'm talking about operating from different rules. You are born of God. Say, I am born of God. Say, I am born of God. Ephesians 2.10. It says, you are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. You were created in Christ Jesus for good works. You were created for good things. Good works that he ordained that you walk in. Now, let me go through this because I'm telling you, what does it mean to be born of God? You see, Adam was not born of God, but he was created by God. God says, let us make. He made him. He made him. He says, let us make man in our image. That's biology. So God made man and then let's look at verse Chapter 2, verse 7. And the Lord formed man out of the dust of the ground, and he breathed into his nostrils the breath that gave him life. And man became a living soul. That's how the biological life started. It's like you make a watch, and then you wind it, and then release the power of that coil, and the watch begins to walk. That's what God did. He released his, his life force into this 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 jar of clay but you have to understand and those are the ones that john was saying they are of the world 
So those ones that are of the world were the ones that were made. God made everybody, but God did not give birth to everybody. There's a big difference. The Bible says, John chapter 3 verse 12. If I have told you earthly things, you will believe not. How shall you believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Jesus is telling them now. He says, if I talk to you about earthly things, you don't even believe me. Now, if you don't believe me, how are you going to believe me when I start talking about heavenly things? There's another dimension of operation that people have never seen. And that dimension of operation is heavenly. Everybody say it's heavenly. John chapter 3 verse 31. He says, he that cometh from above is above all and here is jesus teaching and i've seen a lot of people in church they don't even read their bibles but they will argue with you oh well i don't feel like way it doesn't matter how you feel these are the realities in fact this message i preached 2009 christ realities are my possibilities this one that, that tells you i've been living this way since I got born again, 2009, October 14th, I have the date here. That's when I, I, I started expounding on this thing. Why? Because when I discovered this realities, it was fire in my bones. I knew I couldn't be sick. I knew I couldn't be sick. What am I saying to you? There is something on the inside of you that fear, fear comes, is being fed by other people telling you words are what are packages they come and they carry these packages into your spirit to create a room for the enemy to come and dwell in give no place to the devil give no place to sickness give no place to that kind of talk not around me i you can't be sick around me hang around me every day you'll be very healthy hallelujah i'm telling you you don't know what kind of schedules we keep here i'm telling you we're doing greater things and better things are happening hallelujah what am i saying to you hear this the bible says he that comes from above is above all he that is of earth is earthly and also speaks of the earth he that comes from heaven is above all I like the I like the Jesus talk. I love I, that's why I tell people I said some of you don't read your Bible. You read you're indoctrinated and you don't get it. If see with the Bible says except you're born from above, you're born from above. You cannot see. That means you cannot perceive. It didn't say you cannot enter. It says you have to be born again to see it. So when you see it then you have a choice to enter. So when you're born again, your spirit's open to this new dimension. You are operating in heaven on earth. That means there's another dimension. You just walk into it with your physical body. You're operating by different rules. You're a new creature. And then something begins to happen. Something on the inside of you begins to happen. What am I saying? You see, the Bible says, if any man be in Christ as a new creature, the old things are passed away. They're dead. Behold, all things have become new. And all things are of God. I love my Bible. Come on, somebody. Second Corinthians 5 verse 18. Let's read that scripture and come back to this. Hallelujah. Because the whole thing about Second Corinthians, if you start from Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 1, he's telling you, verse 1 says, For we know that if our earthly house... Of this tabernacle were dissolved. In other words, if I dissolve your body, like you know how the mafia people and all the gangster people, they would just put you and put something over and just dissolve your body. They said, and here now is Paul speaking. He says, if your earthly house of this tabernacle, now a tabernacle is different from a temple god says build me a tabernacle and they went ahead building a temple they built the structure so what happens people have to go to the temple to worship god but god says i don't want a temple i want a tabernacle a tabernacle is a movable structure in other words god does not dwell in hands Built with human with houses built with human hands. In other words, he dwells in moving structures. He says, if this tabernacle 
If this, he said, you know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, if we dissolve you, we have another building inside of you. In other words, this physical house, when it goes right now, there's another one that's inside there. In other words, both the one that is physical and the one that is supernatural from, it is not in heaven, it is from heaven. It came down in you. Now, how can sickness be there? Is there sickness in heaven? Are the quiet in heaven were quiet because of a heavenly flu? You've heard of Hong Kong flu, bird flu. You've never heard of heavenly flu. Hallelujah. You see, people don't understand this. It says, if this tabernacle, if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, hear what it says now. It gets better. We're dissolved. We have our building of God. Pay attention. It does not say we have our building from God. It says it is of God. That means for it to be of God means God is on the inside of us. It is the, 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 the thing is not from. That means it's not coming from heaven. It already came from within God and is in you right now. He says a house not made with hands. Eternal. In the heavens. Okay, people say, but it's in heaven. That's not what it says. In the heavens, plural. Where are you seated? In heavenly places. Same thing. In other words, where you're seated now, that thing is inside of you. In the heavens. Not in heaven. Let's get it straight the way it's written. In the heavens. In the heavens. In the heavens. And the Bible talked about that wisdom that descended not from above is earthy, sensual, and devilish. It's about feelings. But if it comes from above, it's about victory. Hallelujah. First John, sorry, John chapter 1 verse 14. You see, the, the sons of God, the children of God, what it means to be born of God... They have a totally different characteristic from what the world knows. They have it. I mean, those of you that are watching me, should I, you want me to teach this the rest of the week? I will teach it because I don't want you to be ever afraid of dealing with the devil. I never want you to be afraid of the virus. To be That's why I said, I cannot be sick. I cannot be sick. I've not been sick for about 35 years or so. Not been sick. Why? You know, we get tired, fine. You can get a sports injury, fine, that's an injury, it's not a sickness. When any sickness touches your body, it dies on contact because you are not of the human type. You're of the God type. You're a different species. And there cannot be a, a trans species transfer of that nonsense. Because the kind of species you're, you're of, where you come from, is immune to sickness. You come from God and you're immune to sickness. And I hear all these religious people are talking. I said, listen, you sit in nice, nice places in America and other places. I go out in the field and prove it. That's the difference. What I tell you, we're proving it in over almost 90 countries now. What am I saying to you? God is at work in you. You're pretty good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's what I'm talking about. Let's get that scripture again. I, I want us to make sure we can get that scripture down. John chapter 1 verse 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. In verse 12, I want you to know what it says there. You have to understand in verse 12, the Bible declares in John 1 verse 12, I want you to pay attention to what it says there. It says it came to his own. Let's go to verse 12 of that scripture. And his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the power to become, to become the sons of God. What it means to be born of God. When you have the power, you are immune from sickness, from disease. I read a scripture when we started tonight. The Bible says, it, oh come on, can I talk to you tonight? The Bible says, Anyone that is born of God does not commit sin. Okay. 
So the religious people are thinking, oh, he's talking about sin. No, no, no. Pay attention now. Don't, don't, don't get lost in this now. Anyone that is born of God does not commit sin because the seed of God is in you. Let me tell you why that scripture is important. If, you didn't, if you're born of God, you cannot commit sin because if you commit sin, death will enter. So you cannot commit sin. That means death cannot follow sin because death or sickness and disease came with sin. So if sin cannot come in, anything that sin is inviting will not come. Did you get that? Did you get that? Because a lot of people thinking, oh, it's talking about sin. Romans 5, 2, because of one man's disobedience, sin entered into the world and death came by sin. So without sin, death will not come. So when it says anyone that is now born of God cannot commit sin. So if you cannot commit sin, death cannot come. Sickness cannot come because you are immune from sin. Cannot. I didn't put that in. It's in your Bible. Or people say, well, what do you mean it cannot come to sin? Well, listen to me. When a believer does not know who they are, they start acting like who they are not. You fall into errors. You steal because you don't know that you're royalty. Kings don't steal. King owns stuff. You know that your father will supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory, not according to your bank account. You begin to think differently. If God be for me, who can be against me? You begin to understand that I have never seen the righteous or a believing man forsaken or his seeds begging for bread. If you really believe, there is no way you fail, your faith will fail you. Hallelujah. Because now you have the faith of God at work in you. The Bible declares that Galatians 2.20, it says, we are crucified with Christ, nevertheless, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son. So in other words, I am using his faith that does not fail. When mine had failed before, he just said, son, relax. Now that you're born of me, my faith is already invaded in you. Hallelujah. We have an invaded faith. The very faith of God is now working in you. That's why I say your origin determines your makeup. Your origin, where you come from, determines who you really are, not your environment. You can be in the wrong environment. The moment you hear this good news, I'm telling you, that sickness breaks free. Hallelujah. And that sickness will not come on you. The situation you're facing will not come on you. I'm talking about understanding what we are called to do. Born of God. So these are the days people talk about, oh, we don't need to be afraid. Excuse me? I don't talk about fear. I talk about love. A man that works in love doesn't even consider fear. I don't have a, you said, oh, we cannot be afraid of this. People are talking about not being afraid. It's like saying, oh, look at darkness. Light does not concern himself with darkness. Darkness is the one that worries about light. Why am I going to be thinking about fear? There's no fear in love. When I walk in love, fear disappears. So I wouldn't even say, oh, don't be afraid of... See, when the virus, when sickness sees me, they are the ones that leave. Light does not leave for darkness to take over. No. Light shines darkness once. That's how it works. I've never seen a darkness so dark that light cannot dispel it. Somebody said, but you know, you know, when you go to certain places, the light is not very, it, it, the light doesn't go through. Let me tell you something. You see, there is an intensity of light. If you go to some places, the light might not be very bright. So it looks like there's a little darkness there. Turn on the light to its fullest power. In other words, when you bring light in its fullest and purest form, that's God. God is light. In him there is no darkness. I'm not having a light bulb. No. I, in me is a source of that light bulb. God is light. Anything that is light comes from God. What is electricity? It's simply a little bit of God's power in the physical world. The Holy Ghost created that. So when people fall under the power of God and start vibrating like that, it's just a little dose of what electricity would do to you. What's the difference? You vibrate when the Holy Ghost, when the, uh, you touch electricity. You vibrate when the Holy Ghost touches you. Why? The Holy Ghost created electricity. So you've got a little dose of that, the creator of electricity. So when people are talking, 
I don't think they understand what they're talking about. When people don't understand what they're talking about, they begin, <laughs> oh, come on, don't make, don't make. <laughs> and then they'll, they'll come and type on their keyboard, well, you, you must be an apostate. Do you know even what that word is? I'm born of God, if you want to know who I am. My DNA is God, it's not biology, because all of a sudden, I'm no longer operating by blood. Flesh and blood has not revealed it. The Bible says, and the Bible says, look at my, look at my hands, put your finger, flesh and bone has not the substance. When he was raised from the dead, he was powered by a different power. And that's the same power that powers us. We are immune. Sickness travels through the bloodstream. But if you're born of God, blood is not, because the Bible says in Leviticus, the life of this flesh is in the blood. But when Jesus died, all of his blood was shed for us. And what happened when he was raised, he was no longer powered by blood. The life in his flesh was no longer the blood. The life in his flesh was the spirit of God that raised him from the dead. And that's the same spirit that works in me. That can wipe out any blood condition that you might have. Hallelujah. The Bible says if that same spirit, if the same spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you, that same spirit would quicken your body. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead would quicken your physical body and give life to it. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. How many of them really believe that? A lot of people don't believe this. We do here. Hallelujah. You've got to believe the whole word of God. So when we are talking about those things, I'm telling you, if you're wondering why I'm fired up tonight, because I have heard enough nonsense. I've heard a lot of rubbish. People that don't even understand anything about the Bible, trying to, trying to explain. You don't explain. You announce the message. You don't change the king's message. What the king says is what you preach. Well, they may not like it. You're not here to represent the people. You represent the king. Give the king's message or you'll be considered treasonous. Why? You don't preach your own message. You preach the word of God. And if the word of God says you are born of God, you better be believing that because it's your time to rule and to reign in life. Hallelujah. Let's put that scripture back up. Hallelujah. If any man is born, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18. Let's go there. It says, you are of God. Hallelujah. I've heard some people, you know, one of the things that I find out sometimes, I'm going to address this. Never allow any person to bully you online or to intimidate you with their little, little writings. They'll write to try to intimidate you. Listen to me. Confront them on side. Not, you don't have to do it in public. And tell them if they really want to talk to them, see you face to face. They will run and hide behind their keyboards. They're cowards. They don't have the gods to talk to you. Because when you start talking about the word of God, they will start manifesting demons. You cast that devil out of them. Come on, I know that. A witch doctor in Nigeria. We, 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 went, we went and the man was, was talking. And he was the chief of the village. And I said... The moment I began to speak the word of God, he fell down on the ground. He was the village chief. Fell down on the ground and he was like this. Don't kill me. I was just speaking the word of God. Those people hiding behind the keyboard, they can't face you. Because when you start speaking the word of God, those demons will come out of them. The word of God is the sword of the spirit. They will never face you. They'll hide behind keyboards, type and run. Listen to me. Never allow any person to intimidate your spirit. Hallelujah. You see, somebody said, well, you have to be gentle. Yes, Jesus with people. He was very gentle. He whipped the money changers. We whip people that have a different agenda from the king's agenda. That means give no place to nonsense in your life. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm done. I'm done releasing that now. Glory. Let me move on. Let me be nice. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> and the witch doctor was just delivered. This old man jumped out of the window because he was actually trying to show us a, an apartment to rent. And he ran. He never saw me. After that, every time I was coming, the man would hide. But he was the one that terrorized everybody in that place. He said to me, where you come from? Your father was very powerful. I said, you're right. And then he wants to prophesy to me, a witch doctor. He says, oh, well, I have to tell you, you have to be careful. I said, shut up. You have no right to speak into my life. Jesus knew when the demons were calling out. But he didn't let them speak. Why? Because I said, oh, let, you don't give me instruction. I'm the king. I give the devils instruction. Get out. 
In fact, if I give them instruction, they said, should we go? They cast themselves out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have to understand we operate. I'm talking about what it means to be born of God. What it means to be born of God. What am I saying to you? You see, the Bible talked about two kinds of people. Those that are born of God and those that are born of the flesh. Big difference. You have to understand that when people are born of the flesh, the Bible says, talking about Adam, it says in 1 Corinthians, uh, let's put that scripture first of all, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 18. It says, all things are of God. All things are of God. Who has reconciled us to himself? Do you believe that? I am reconciled back to God. I'm not going to be reconciled when we get to heaven. I am already reconciled with God. So right now, there is reconciliation. I'm not waiting to get to heaven and say, oh Lord, I'm back. No, I'm on a mission here. I'm already reconciled. The, all the bad blood and everything was done with. We are done with that. I am his beloved. So now I'm reconciled. He reconciled all things to himself by Jesus Christ. Now I come as an ambassador of the king. As an ambassador of the king, I come to speak the word of God. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Are you with me? So I am not trying to reconcile with God. I already reconcile with God. I want you to understand that. Amen? Are you, are you with me? Let's pay attention to this because I want you to understand all things are of God who had reconciled us. Say me. Say he has reconciled me. Say he has reconciled me. Hallelujah. So when I hear people say, well, you know, God is, I say, listen, I don't have an, an uh, well, let them say like an American, I don't have any beef with God. I don't have any trouble with God. We are good. He loves me. <laughs> You know, you don't have to, but he does. He thinks I'm something, and he thinks you're something too. He thinks you're somebody amazing. Hallelujah. The Bible says we are his offspring. Let me explain to you what that means. There are two kinds of people. Those that are born biologically, and those that are born of the spirit. The Bible says in Job chapter 25 verse 4. How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? See, that's the one birth, born of a woman. Because anyone that is born of a woman, this is what the Bible says in Job chapter 5 verse 7. It says, yet a man is born unto trouble. As the sparks fly upwards. That means any man that is born of the flesh is born to trouble. That's why the trouble happened. But we are not of that type. We are of the God type. So anyone that is born of that type does that kind of business. The sparks fly. That's how they have the troubles. I'll give you a little scripture. Job chapter 11 verse 12. For vain man would be wise. Though man be born like a wild, wild donkey colt. What am I saying to you? The Bible talks about Isaiah 61 verse 9. It says, and their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. This is a new breed of people coming. Their seed shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them. This is the new creature. That they are the seed which the Lord has blessed. Can somebody say amen? Acts 17 verse 27 to 29. That they should seek the Lord if happily they might feel after him. And find him though he be not far away from any one of us. Verse 28. For in him we live. And move and have our very being. If you live and move and have your very being in him, why are you going to be sick? Is God ever sick? No, that's not possible. So it's not about, or I, it's not just making a statement that I don't get sick. It's because I know those things that for me to be sick, I have to create a room for sickness to come and live in. And if I don't create that room, sickness will find nothing to attach itself to. Why? I have knowledge. 
there is not living dangerously. People say we're living in dangerous times or you're living dangerously. No, it's not danger if you know the rules. You, 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 you can jump off a cliff if you know how to jump into the water safely. You can jump off the cliff and use your parachute. People do those things. Why? They have mastered. They have mastered that lifestyle. Wherever you have attained mastery, you rule and reign. And the Bible says you shall reign in life through one Christ Jesus. My question to you, have you gained mastery of Christ? If you've not gained mastery, or in other words, known Christ or be known by Christ, this is your night to know that. You can gain mastery of Christ. You've got, you, you have to know what kind of substance you're made of. I said, like I said, your origin determines your makeup. You might be under a chicken, but you're an eagle. Don't you forget that. What do you do? Hatch off. Look at yourself. You look like your father. You look like God himself. Stop allowing people talk you into sickness and disease. Stop allowing people talk you into failure. Telling you it's okay to be a chicken. We were born to be an eagle. In other words, tonight, you're breaking free from those limitations that have been on you. As I'm speaking to you today, something is breaking free. Something is coming on you. It's breaking you free. And it's the power of the word of God. You're stepping up to all that you can be. And for those that are watching the line, would you like me to continue tomorrow? Because I can continue tomorrow talking about this topic. If you want me to continue, I want to see your yeses. I'm watching I'm watching the screen right now. I want to make sure you that are watching online, you click and tell me, I want you to teach on this tomorrow. I'll come tomorrow and I'll give you round two about what it means to be born of God. Because once you understand this, demons will clear out. Sickness will clear out. You're operating by different rules. You begin to understand what you were born to do. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I see Emma is on. I see all of you. So you tell me if you want us to continue tomorrow, we're going to continue tomorrow. But tonight, I'm going to do something for you. I want to give you the opportunity to make an investment in the kingdom of God. You become God's partner. How can you become a partner of God? Hallelujah. You become a partner of God by you investing in what we are doing. Some of you don't understand. We are building out and we're reaching out to the world. There are people around the world that we are helping. We are helping them, especially in these tough times. We are helping them get them situated pastors, different people. We get all the, help, the calls every day and all kinds of people are asking us for help. You say, it is your giving, your generosity that helps make the world a better place. We have a big platform where we can really help a lot of people. So we want to encourage you. We are going to be here. People talking about social distancing. Well, you can come. We have enough space for you to come. If you can go to Walmart, you can come here. Hallelujah. That's how it works. We just give you, if you want 18, 18 feet, we give you 18 feet. Come here. Hear the word of God. Get yourself charged up on Sunday. Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> so if you want round two, I want to say, I see only six people say yes, seven, eight. Okay, eight people. So those eight people, I'll give you a special. I see more people. Are, okay, they're getting smart now. Everybody else is putting it in. Hallelujah. <laughs> okay, so we want to do something. We want to give you an opportunity. We're going to receive our tithes, our offerings, our gift. You believe in this ministry. It's like a vote. You said, I've been blessed today. I want to sow a good seed into this ministry so that we can get the gospel out to the world. So that you can hear messages, life-changing messages like this. And that's what we're going to do. They're going to put that on the screen for you so you can release a seed. One thing I love about the word of God, the principles of God's word always works. As long as the earth remains, seed time and harvest will never cease. The world is still out there. The earth is still out there. The principles of God's word still works. Jesus said about the seed principle. He said, if you don't understand the parable of the sower, why, how are you going to understand the rest of the kingdom? Because seed and harvest is the beginning principle of the, of the kingdom. God gave Jesus and got us in return as the harvest. That's how God always operates. You invest in a company, you get the return on the investment. You source into the kingdom, you get amazing opportunity and doors open to you and protection by the word of God. I'm telling you, God is at work in you. Hallelujah. 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 Okay, Ramsey. <laughs> it's so funny. So let's go. Okay. <laughs> so, 
What we're going to do right now is I'm going to give you, you go to Christlove.org. There is a button that says donate. You can use your debit card and things like that and sow a seed. And, uh, or you can go to paypal.me slash Charles and Nathan. And you can sow your seed. We're going to give you an opportunity. Paul made a statement. He said, I know you are generous. I know you want to invest in this. But you lack the opportunity. So we want to give you that opportunity today. You believe in this message. You believe. I want you to go back and listen to it. You believe in this message. I want you to go there and sow a seed. If you, if you cannot do that, you can sell, send something. Maybe a check or money order to Christ Love Media at P.O. Box 72800 Providence, Rhode Island, 02907. You'll be able to send that seed. And we're going to pray for everyone that is investing tonight. We want to pray for this revelation to become fire in your bones. Everyone that invests tonight, after we are done, as the investments come in, you sow your seed. I'm going to take a moment. I'm going to release a prayer that this revelation will become fire in your bones. That you're experiencing everything you've heard tonight. It's not enough to hear it. You must become what you've heard. That's the whole point of it. And I pray that this is helping you tonight. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, for tonight. Thank you for everyone that has watched this program. Thank you for those that will share it with others to encourage their hearts. Let them hear something fresh from heaven. Let them hear something fresh from heaven. Thank you, Lord. They're walking in faith and in victory. In the name of Jesus. And the people say, Amen. Write and let us know what we can do for you. And uh, put on your prayer request in the inbox. We want to be able to read, pray for you. And for those of you that are, are sowing the seats tonight, 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 I want you to release something uncommon. Let's get the gospel to every corner of the globe. Amen. We want to put this in as many platforms as possible. And we'll pray that you can be a partner with us, getting the good news to everybody around the world. God bless you. And I will see you guys again tomorrow. We'll announce, give you a couple of hours so that you can get yourself ready. I feel this message is necessary now. Don't you agree? Thank you very much for joining us today. And we we'll look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. And we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>